So when we get to the boat, we can either look for that special chisel now, or go exploring for a little while. I'm happy with whatever you want to do. Boat under the bridge, keep rowing towards the statues of the oarsmen, then thread past between them. did tell me why Freya spit in your face. Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances, and not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won, but the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses, and for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore. Rather senseless waste of precious life. Wouldn't you agree, brother? Mm, precisely. Enough was enough. And at last, Odin's most brilliant advisor became determined to find a more enlightened path. He set about to broker a peace between the gods. It took some convincing, but ultimately Odin was persuaded to marry his deadliest enemy, a certain Vanir goddess, legendary not only for her fertile beauty, but her genius at the very Vanir magic that Odin had long aspired to master. Freya married Odin? What was in it for her? It was a sacrifice to protect her people. A selfless act of love. Truly, she deserves better than she got. But of course, there's more to that story. Come. Boy, over here. Another marker.
I need that alchemist for something I'm stewing up for you. If in your smarts, you'll find him. Can you read it? Sir. Uh, these runes read death inside. So, Brock said his friend was dwarven like him, wearing a green ring. Look if you wish. I will be gathering resources for our journey. You don't want to help him? No. Why not? Because I do not run errands for the dwarves. Oh. Dwarven, but no ring. One of his crew? Storage marks. There, along the floor and wall. Weird. I guess we keep looking. We? I mean, I'll keep looking. That's a soul eater. If that kills us, that's it. No Valhalla, no hell, no after ever. It does not attack. Ah, oh. Mom made them sound more dangerous than that. Then do not drop your guard. Come. Thought you didn't care. I noticed the lack of ring while looting the body. Ah. Oh. gonna find Brock's friend alive. There's the ring on that severed hand. Attached to the soul eater. Well, we know what happened to Invari now. We can just go tell Brock. I don't need to fight it, right? No, we will fight it. But why? Because you are frightened of it.
Boy. Yes, sir. Hey, it's another treasure map. Strong, Atreus. Stay focused and look for a weak point. Yes, sir. Inscription. The alchemist. But where's the rest of him? Ashes, most likely. The soul leader got him. I guess we should bring this back to Brock. Read it. Yes, sir. These runes were written fast. It spells out Ejim Staney. Hmm. I don't know that one. We will ask the blue one. So now you're interested? We found his alchemist. A reward was promised. Oh, my God. 
What'd you find? Your alchemist. I'm sorry, Brock. The hand is all we could find. Still wearing the ring. There was a soul leader inside. And well, he must have burned away the rest of him. Suppose you'll still be wanting some compensation, huh? Naturally. Naturally, he says. Miani Furuxi. I'll take a closer look at this here ring. Maybe Anvari left a bit of magic inside for he croaked. Dwarves can do that? Sure, dwarves and magic jewels is like flies and pig lips. Supple ones. Ugh. I'm not as interested as I thought. Oh there. Got another favor to ask you to. What do you want, Dwarf? I got another lead on my old pal on Vari. Meet me at the Lonsuther Mines. There's some fancy dancy loot in it for you. Another lead? But we already found it. Well, found his hand anyways. I'll explain at the mines. These ones is just south of the river pass. Now you two want something, or you just gonna stand there all gag scrapped and slack jaw?
pulled the ring off on Vari's hand at the Vellander Mines. The fella was always tampering with souls and dark rituals and matters of the night, see? Just the sound of his hammer flattening metal were enough to stoke my fires all blissful. Shit, you better clear out before I get all frisky. Boy. I can't believe Odin and Freya were ever married. Love and hate are more closely intertwined than you might imagine. For instance, Odin hates the giants and they him. But Thor's own mother, the giantess Jorgun, one of Odin's great loves. So Thor's half god and half giant? Where? Once Jorgun was gone, lonely ages passed for Odin. And as war with the Vanir raged, I could see what he really wanted from his bluster. And after no small amount of convincing, they are agreed. For a while there, he really turned on the charm. He seemed happy. He seemed interested in making her happy. He granted her so many wishes, I can scarcely recall them all. The peace held, and I truly believed all had worked out better than I could have planned. But Odin's true face showed itself again in the end. Well, he won Freya's trust, and she taught him some of her Vanir magic, another choice she would live to bitterly regret. Sadly, despite his wise counselor's best efforts to persuade him that peace was the only true path to stave off Ragnarok, Odin never let go of his obsession with Jotunheim. The taste of Vanir magic led him to new forms of experimentation and new levels of depravity. You want a beach here? Looky who decided oh. to show. Talk to this here ring. Uh, what? I can't hear thoughts from rings, Brock. It's talking to me! It's Anvari! Ha! Knew it. He says he went to the Vellander Mines to... observe his mistake. But then the Soul Eater attacked, so as he was being ripped apart... He cast a spell that removed his soul and put in this ring. And 
then he... What about all his stuff? Uh, huh? Anvari had a workshop here with all sorts of posh doodads and ornatory tools. And one beaut of a hammer. You make mention of it still in there? Uh, you're upsetting him. Your point? You fellas take Anvari with you and go have a look-see. If you find his hammer, I'll whip up something real nice for you. Hey now, don't go forgetting your entry stone. Invari isn't happy about us taking his stuff. I do not care. I'm not gonna tell him that. Atreus. And Barry says this dwarf is part of his crew. That he died because of his mistakes. He sounds... The ring's grief is of little importance, boy. He did not like that. He's warning us not to go down there. Stop listening to the ring, boy. You cannot be trusted.
silence that ring boy. I don't know how! Here. Boy. Yes, sir. Hey, it's another treasure map. yourself. And a traveler. Guard up. done here. Hmm. A dead soul eater. What's a soul eater even doing? What do you mean it's your fault? Boy, ignore him. It's sort of tough for me to ignore.
says this chest will trigger a bunch of crap. I see no traps. You sounded so sure about it. Shop is up there. But I know, I know. Don't trust the talking ring. done.
just listen. Invari's crew did something bad here. He's glad you destroyed his life, and he's sorry he kept trying to trick us. His hammer is just through this gate. Boy. Sir. Okay. That's going in the journal. <laughs> this is a fine hammer. Invari says thank you. Talk to the blue one. To find that hammer, or you too busy looting every keyhole and cranny? Here, the alchemist's hammer. His spirit is a nuisance. Yeah, Anvari always was an asshole. Hell of an alchemist, though. Hand him over here and I'll melt him down. What? You're going to melt down your friend? A trapped soul's what I need to give your reward some extra oomph. You don't want it? Father, we can't do that. Here, you hold on to him. He's really useful, I promise. Fine. So long as he proves his worth. Kid's a bit of a softy, huh? Well, he'll grow out of it. Hey, Brock. You found something interesting. Did you now? Well, color me interested. See you boys ran afoul of some travelers. Or them travelers ran afoul of you more like. Who are they? What do they want? Dunno! Boy, you ask a lot of questions.
Okay. Obviously, the marriage to Odin didn't last. But how did Fran end up a hermit in the woods? Oh, that was a singular piece of cruelty, even for Odin. As if the marriage wasn't punishment enough. Freya was better to him than he deserved. She stuck it out through all manner of indignity, all in the name of maintaining peace and safety for her people. But Odin's madness, his tyranny, his corruption of her magics, it became more than she could stomach, and at long last she broke it off. Odin's wrath was fierce, and his curses upon her were more than she dared to fear. But her magic was so much stronger than his. After so much time together, he knew her vulnerabilities. He exploited them to craft curses she could never break. Oh, like not being able to leave Midgard. But still, he robbed her of a warrior spirit. Freya cannot fight, even to defend herself. No living thing may she harm by blade nor spell. In a world this belligerent, what choice does she have but isolation? Poor Freya. I guess if I was her, I'd spit in your face too. I lied. So would I. over here. of a language cipher. We should look for more like this. Boy, over here. Another map! Great!
Prepare yourself! Here, boy. Another one. This one is Thrym, a frost giant king. Correct. A cunning one as well. Is that Mjolnir? Did he steal Thor's hammer? Aye, for a time. A lot of these seem to end with Thor killing them. Imagine that. Skill continues to grow. Ah, oh, I can read. 
what this says now. But it's a name. Car Whoa! The name made it light up! It's the name of one of the Valkyries. That's quite curious. Shrine about a giant lady. Lots of books and, and visions. Ah, that would be Goa, the knowledge keeper. She was a gifted sorceress who gathered every tome of arcane wisdom she could find in the realms, all in the hopes of augmenting her powers of prophecy that she might find her lost husband, Arvan. But it was not her husband she would glimpse in her visions. For it was Groa, seeing longer and farther than any before or since, who witnessed Ragnarok, the end and the beginning. When Odin caught word of her ultimate prophecy, he maneuvered to obtain her knowledge and hoard it for himself. Groa knew Odin as a long-time patron of her services, and so she welcomed him into her library as a friend. What she did not know is that Odin himself was behind her husband's disappearance, having used his enchantments to conceal his death at Thor's hands from her sight. Smiling, jealous Odin took her by the throat, and with his very hands he stole her library and her life for his own. I always knew Odin was bad. That's just... Ruthless, barbaric, heartless? That's Odin. In fact, we would do well to sit here in silence for the next few moments and reflect on Odin's capacity for cruelty. And so... Reflect longer.
Find something useful here. <laughs> One more for the collection. God of Thunder! Your challenges mean nothing to the gods, spirit. They do not listen. Do not mock my pursuit of vengeance. Though my family devoted their lives to worshipping Thor, I've devoted mine to his downfall. And I will start with that statue looming over my father's grave. Unlikely. You are dead. Is there something we can do? For a reward, of course. If you bring down the statue, you have my blessing to loot my father's grave. He rests on an island to the east. Why do you hate Thor so much? After my father passed, my mother built the statue to watch over his grave. Imagine our surprise when the God of Thunder himself came to offer condolences. Which birth 
grill. He quickly took advantage of our hospitality. My mother begged him to leave, and Thor, in his drunken rage, killed her. I was left with nothing but grief. Eventually, I lost that as well, and found only rage in its place. I... I'm so sorry. Come, boy. We have a statue to destroy. The one whose mom was killed by Thor? What about him? Let his story be a reminder. The lives of men mean nothing to the gods. I know, Father. You know. But do you listen? Yes. <laughs> Good.
Boy. Yes, sir. Vathergar. Southern outposts of the Dwarven King. Dwarven King? Have you ever heard of a Dwarven King? No. I'd heard rumors of a powerful dwarf ruling over some poor sods not far from here. Not that you asked me. What happened to these people? Follow the clues. Okay. Well, scorch marks. They're all grouped together. So maybe they were hiding from some kind of fire breather. But they died anyways. <laughs> Look here. Sir! Curse the Dwarf King. Bane of mankind. Sounds like he wasn't a very good king. I wonder why they hated him so much. They are dead now. Does it matter? No. I'm just curious. Curiosity is dangerous, boy. Stay focused. Read it. Yes, sir. Obey the doubt. It means hunting death. Great.
begin to build statues this big? Dwarves are resourceful creatures. Annoying, but resourceful. I guess they must have been pretty important dwarves. Here it is. It's got to have a weak point. Somewhere. are doing this himself. easily, boy. I know, I know. I was just joking. Nor are they a joking matter. Sorry. Father's great. Find anything good? Perhaps. God's caused so much trouble for us. Because that is their nature. But with all that power, you would think at least some of them would try to make life better for people. And yet, the gods continue to spread misery. This is life, boy. That sounds like a dragon.
Looks like we got them all. Follow me, Atreus. I'm on way. Is this one chained up too? Boy. Yes, sir. Ah, I was wondering about this.
dragon? Mother used to tell me stories. Can we help him? This dragon is dangerous. I guess so. But it sounds so sad.
Board. Yes, sir. Hmm. This is good to know. Looks like the runes on the right side fell off. They must be around here. Huh? Oh, and the other. This should be easy to solve now. Despite his failures. Look here, another. It's Scully. Mother liked her. A great huntress. That's right. Queen of the Hunt, they called her. That's her father, and all the animals she hunted. He taught her well. In the last battle, her father again. Both of them, in the snow. And they're still there. It's quite a story. I see improvement. A ruin. Well, yeah. But if a dwarf built it, they must have been impressive back when he ruled. Trade those for? Boy, 
Sir. The Dwarf King made his subjects hunt dragons and other monsters for him? Some king, huh? Father, you may want to see this. Looks like that lever over there will free him. He will attack. I know, but it feels wrong to keep something caged like this. <laughs> Your emotions again, boy. You can't hear their thoughts. I can. Ignore them, and ready yourself. Okay. thinking now well nothing but he was grateful to die in battle instead of rotting in a cage your skill is improving you fought well atreus thank you father
Ah, oh, fresh air feels good. Guard your emotions, boy. Your enemies will not hesitate to use them against you. I thought you said it'd be dangerous to destroy the other ones. If it was your mother's wish. Yeah. You are too eager, boy. It may attack us, and we will be forced to kill it. Good point. I'll be ready. <laughs> we will see. Follow me, Atreus. find out if dragons can be grateful or not. Even all the people who lived here. Follow the clues, boy. Right, right. All the clues. Okay, so there was an evil dwarf king, and he made all these people hunt monsters. The people put them in cages, and then. And then I don't know. Hmm. We are missing a clue. Back inside the castle? No. There is nothing more for us inside. But stay alert for chain dragons, boy. Perhaps you'll uncover more about this dwarf king.
Ed, you are full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? He just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Hrungnir, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Aesir. A pretty story, but... no. Hrungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart. So the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Hrungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh, no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Hrungnir's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. You there? Have you destroyed the statue? The statue stands no longer, Spear. My bond to this realm is severed, and I am off to find the real god of thunder. He will know retribution. My deepest gratitude. Off he goes. Brave guy. Going to look for Thor on his own. He is a fool.
What did the spirit leave us? An offering to one of the gods. Can we use it? No, but perhaps the dwarves can. Did you take a look at this? What you got for old Brock? Tyr would have been pleased as peaches knowing these offerings were being turned to armor. Did you know him? What was he like? Never you mind, boy. Tyr's dead. Best not to dig up the past. The dwarf speaks wisely, for once. Well, let's get to it. What you need, kid? Let that spit fister of a brother of mine lay hands on it again. Sure, that's a load off your mind. Always a pleasure. Now fuck right along. 